Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Now it's time for the takeover. Buckle up for Kobe. Kobe Bryant just sucked the gravity out of the target center. Not the game. We talking about practice, man. That's it. Right. There you have it, folks. It is episode 148. I'm your host, Ryan Seekert, for another beautiful night of the Takeover Sports Podcast. And I usually have my guy Fletcher behind the scenes, but unfortunately, he's no longer here. He moved to Phoenix. So we got a new guy behind the cameras. Sean Deville, sound off, baby. How we doing? What is up? Pretty good. How are you guys? Good, good. Uh, great weekend. Weather's getting a little colder here in the Treasure Valley. I'm sure you guys are aware, but I mean, I'm a big fall weather guy. Yeah. It's almost hoodie season. Sean, yep. how you feel about that, baby? We are just right into football season. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Yes. No, I love it. It's honestly fall is my favorite. Well, I like I like summer, but fall, I just feel better during the fall. Mentally? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm not sweating as much. Yeah. Are you a skier? Is that probably why? Do you like winter sports? I'm a hockey player, so. Winter like sports? Winter, yep. Okay. So, yeah, and I'm a skier as well, so it is kind of nice to transition into winter after a good amount of days over 100 degrees. Yeah. But it's not just about us. We have a very special guest. I'm sure if you read the title of this video and you saw the thumbnail, we have Alexander Tubner. Yes, sir. How's it going? It's going good. The redshirt senior sixth year from seaside oregon so i'm not a geography major but i'm gonna say seaside is like on the coast of oregon yeah is that where you're from yeah that's a good guess it's like uh the very top left corner of oregon so almost washington okay so is it kind of like by vancouver uh washington it's not far not too far okay okay seaside oregon so you played football in high school yeah and not only did you play defense like what you do now, you were a two-way player, according to my scouting report. You yeah. played running back. Yeah. Over 4,000 yards in, two, in like the last two years in high school. Why weren't you recruited running back? Did you like running back? How did that happen? Uh, I love running back. Um, I don't know if a lot of those college recruits are making their way down I-5 <laughs> or Highway 101 through, uh, through the Oregon coast. But, um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't have much of a recruiting process. Uh, at least from the running back or even just in general in general okay yeah so that's a perfect segue so yeah walk on at boise state right yep okay so how did you know about boise state did someone reach out to you were you just like hey i've always wanted to go here how did that go um it wasn't like i was a huge boise state fan growing up or necessarily followed him really closely um it was actually my high school coach that grew up in boise and had still had connections up here and kind of got me uh, I guess my foot in the door in a sense I at least got someone to watch my film but uh I mean from that point on where I knew like you know I didn't have really anywhere to go walk on is trying to find a place that would one give me a shot and preferably that would, you know fit the type of person I am and it just so happened to found both okay and do do you think any of the old heads would know your high school coach who is he uh Jeff Roberts I'm not sure um <laughs> I think uh, he talks about himself. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what position did Jeff play? Was he the head coach for you guys? or? Yeah. So okay. he, so he uh, a tight end, I'm pretty sure. He's a bigger guy. I think he's a, more of a blocking tight end. But, yeah, he played at. Right, okay. So he graduated high school out of Oregon, but he grew up here most of the time and then played at Linfield. Okay. So Coach Jeff Roberts had connections at Boise State. Yeah. Uh, did something did Jeff be like hey looks like they want to like they want to talk to you or was it like a, did you get a visit or how did you get the foot in the or what was the process after the foot in the door at Boise State um so they sent my film over to uh coach Robert sent over one of his buddies who got it in the facility I think it was coach Avalos I probably watched it originally so this is 2019 yeah when he was the DC before he left Oregon okay that's right and then um yeah they said Kid looks like he can play. Um, look, hopefully, give him a shot. Didn't hear from him a while, and then uh, what 
was it maybe March or when about whenever the spring game is a couple of weeks beforehand they called me and asked me if uh be able to make it down there for the spring game so that was my first time and only time seeing campus before walking on here and mm-hmm. uh yeah I watched watched the spring game with my dad and kind of tour campus and then after that didn't hear from them at all and then it was <clears throat> like another two weeks before fall camp started they gave me a call saying hey uh can we get you up here like I didn't know that guys came up for summer training and all. I found all that out when I got here so oh whoa my first day here is the first day of fall camp and so what day would that be? Is that July? It had been like August 1st. August 1st? Okay, and so that's August 1st of 2019? Yeah. So then you sat your whole freshman year. Um, Yeah, so I, was, I redshirted. I ended up getting in two games, one play each, just at the end of the game. Well, Let's go. One, yeah, the first one was, I think, actually against Portland State. And then the second one was in the Vegas Bowl. I was on punt return in the middle of the game. That's crazy. Portland State's your next game. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So... Bang, COVID hits. Yeah. And so 2020 rolls around, and is it Harson's last year? Um, I think I was with Harson for two years, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Okay. So then this is Harson's last year. So you're rolling around, working your butt off, I'm sure. And he talks about, hey, like, you know, I think we might get you to start or any positive feedback throughout, like, COVID or how to, how was the COVID year? Um. No, I was still <laughs> I was still a role player on the team, earning my stripes. Um, Good dude. Yeah, the twenty twenty years when I started playing on special teams. I think by the end of the year, I was I had played all four. I think I started on three of the four core special teams, and just over the course of the year, just trying to you know make the plays that came to me. Were you a safety in high school? Yeah. Okay, so you just always liked playing safety. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you like being like the roamer, or do you kind of like being like the run support guy? Do you like the pass coverage? What's your favorite? Um, I like it all. I like I like being in a position where, you know, you're, you, you get more freedom to make plays. You're allowed to be just a natural football player. And I think that's what Coach Chin does a really good job now, putting me and all of us really in that, those mm-hmm. positions where we can play free. Okay. Do a little bit of everything. Play free when you can kind of just be, like, just be yourself as a football player. Is yeah. that what you mean by that? Yeah. Nice. Okay, and so... Avalos then takes go takes over head coach, takes yeah. take over take over, um, takes over head coach and then so you, then become more involved on defense it seems like right, yeah. going to that first UCF game, um, if I'm not mistaken. No, so I was still, primarily if not all special teams at that point. I okay. Think I started playing a little dime here and there over the course of the year and then coming in, the end of games and, um, that might have been the year. 2021 where like JL got ejected for targeting a couple times so that's when oh I man first so then that's when up. you okay yeah okay that's where I'm getting the glimpses of you being on the field okay yeah. JL yeah gotcha okay and so what was it like playing playing with JL was he just different yeah he the thing I love about JL is he's just always himself he's a heck of a football player but mm-hmm. he's just a cool dude to be around like he had his own swag to him and I love being JL's teammate Really? Yeah. What was your favorite part of JL? Is he is he a funny guy? He's funny. Really? Yeah, he, but it's like like he's a pretty reserved human being and then all of a sudden he just like says something and he's just like JL? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he's he's a funny dude. And yeah, what's he like as uh like kind of in the locker room? Does he kinda of lock in during game time or is he just always kinda of like reserved funny, even on the field, on the sideline? No, nah, he's pretty like you see the way he plays, like the passion of the game, like he was pretty intense on yeah. game time and um yeah, he kind of had his own flow during the game. Like, everyone has their own, like, you mm-hmm. know, how they handle themselves. And, yeah, he's just in his own, like, his own zone. You still in touch with him at all? With uh, him being a Denver? Yeah, I, te- I try to text him when I can. We talk back and forth time to time. Okay. Yeah. Pick his brand at all still or just being like, yo, how's Denver, dude? It's more so just saying, like, I, like, I watch a lot of his games. So, when you see him, like, uh, week one, he had, like, two big-time special teams plays. He did? First, yeah, first week of the season. And it's just like, dude, I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Like, your time's going to come. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, no, I, I saw – didn't he – big play on special teams. Didn't he force a fumble? He had a fumble recovery, and then he downed a punt on, like, the one-yard line. And I think he also had, like, a tackle <laughs> that game, too, on punt. Okay. Uh, and who did the say. Broncos play week one? I'm, space, I'm spacing on that. That was the Seahawks? Seahawks. The Seahawks. Yep, it was in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. So, now – 
this last, not this season, but the season before, that's when you became the starter. Avalos is last year. Yeah. Yeah. So the 2022 season is when I started. I think I started in our dime package. So I was in and out or depending on, on the, the field. Yeah. Okay. And then I think I started a couple games like against New Mexico and then the Frisco Bowl. And the year after that is when, yeah, I was starter. You dub. Yeah. So what was it like going up against that um, offense for your first game? Run yeah. me through that. What, what, what are you thinking? Like, because you know, you guys know you're facing Michael Penix Jr., yeah. Roma Dunze, Polk. I mean, I mean, yeah, kind of run me through that. I'm sure that's your yeah. kind of like, ooh, here we go. Yeah, so like, I didn't, I want to say I got any more nervous for that game than any other game. I mean, it was a big stage week one of the year. Like, you got a lot of, uh, like, you're really anxious for the game. But getting on the field, you just kind of see where, like, some of these teams we play over the course of the year and a team that is nationally, like, competing on the national level. Like, they just were, as a team, I have a couple of those guys. They just got them pretty much at every position. So, like, yeah, mm -hmm. receiving core, quarterback, O-line, like, they – that was a ta uh, highly talented roster, so. Yeah, national yeah. championship. That's yeah. where they went. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to look back on, I'm sure. You're yeah. like, well, yeah, we played them the first game of the season. Yeah, they're so. a good team. Yeah, really good. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious, too. I mean, you've been – you've seen a lot of talent. You know, you've seen Michael Penix. You've seen the Adunze's different – like Dylan Gabriel. Yeah. In your career so far, who was, like, the one offensive player where you're like, damn. Ash and Genty. Not even, not even hesitation, really. Uh, he's the best player I've ever been on the field with or against in scrimmage. Like, yeah. That's so crazy. You're not the only person to say that, too. Yeah. So what 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 does Ashton do that like stands out from everyone else that you've seen and gone up against? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's the hardest person I've ever had to tackle. It's, <laughs> I mean, he, that that checks out. I mean, then you combine that with his ability to, you know, be explosive in space and make people miss. Like it's it's there's, you see very few people like that, especially in college football. I imagine, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves, but he's gonna be doing the same thing on Sundays. So. Yeah, no, I don't think you're getting out of yourself. I yeah. Mean, was, yeah, I think that's going to happen. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm seeing stuff where he's going. Like, scouts are like, oh, he'll be first round. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I have no idea how, like, I didn't know how the college recruiting process works. Yeah. I definitely don't know how the, the scouting. Pro, yeah. He's a pro scouting and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, with the way he's playing, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't think I'd be surprised. I mean, if it's just off of, like, if you had to rank guys on their talent level, there's no way he's less than the top. 32 guy in the country. I mean, maybe, maybe number one. Absolutely. Yeah. From Why what not? we've seen so far. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. And so how about this in practice where you just like, dude, <laughs> like going up against a guy like Ashton, where when he's running at you, are like, all right, here we go. <laughs> like, well, you know, <laughs> you definitely, you gotta get, if he's on the field, you gotta get your mind right. Like you're not good. You know, sometimes you can go in and take a shot on depending on who the back is or mm -hmm. when you're running through a gap, but you know, you better come ready to get, get down and dirty and tackle somebody. Buckle up. Yeah. Like, All right. It, so in that aspect, yes. But like when plays going, like everyone's got that competitive nature and I'm, you know, right. I'm going to shy down because of course go football player. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of cool. Both of you guys are captains. Yeah, you know, going into your guys' final season, um, actually, real quick, I want to I want to stay on the practice. Did you ever have a hit on Ashton where you're like, yes? Did you ever get him maybe once where you're like, that was a good tackle on my end? Um, you think you ever got him one time? I mean, I'm sure I've popped him here and there, but like, <laughs> there's not a tackle where I'm like, yeah, I I caught him. Like, I I could pull it out. You know what I mean? So, really? Like, you know, I I'll, I'll play pretty. Fit. I'm sure, like, maybe a pass protection or. Like here and there, but I mean, not like I've caught some, you know, these other guys. So yeah, <laughs> fair enough. And so, okay, now going back onto the question. So, you got named captain. How'd that feel? Uh, that was the biggest honor that I've ever received in my life, in my football career, outside of football. That was pretty incredible. Yeah, and I'm sure it is. It means more because like the players voted on this. Yeah, like they trust you, and so it's you and Ahmed on yeah. defense. So. What's the, for the people that don't know, like, what's the, like, what's the captain's responsibilities? What, what does like a day in the life of a defensive captain look like for you? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not necessarily like a change in schedule. It's just, you have to realize now that as a, 
I guess, chosen leader, right? That you, everything you do is being watched, observed, and then, especially for these younger guys, copied, right? Mm -hmm. So how you carry yourself in the facility from practice to treatment and meetings and film and walkthroughs. Like, you have to, like, show up ready to compete and be your absolute best every single day. Like, there's no more of just focusing on yourself. You you now have to set the example for the whole team. So, and then when it comes time, you have to be willing and able to hold, especially your unit. So, for me, on the defense side of the ball, Mm -hmm. the standard that you know and everyone else knows that they can compete at. So, it's just a lot of um, not – it's not necessarily like a, a role, like a new job. It's just now that you're identified as a captain, you have to be something like above what you were before. You have to be your best at all times. Nice. Cause yeah. do you ever catch yourself like in the facility? Like, Oh, like I can't be doing that. I'm a captain. Like I gotta yeah. kind of like, you know, fix your tie a little bit. Yeah. Walk. I, yeah. Little. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's like no one's perfect and everyone, like we're all human. Right. So that, yeah. You know, you have days in the morning where you wake up and you kind of just want to ignore the alarm and stay in bed. Oh, yeah. That's news button, dude. Yeah. It speaks to me. And it's not. And then sometimes you show up and you're not in a good headspace. But, like, it takes it takes strength and discipline to get yourself out of that. And so Spencer Danielson, now the head coach. Yeah. And so I'm sure I've heard everything positive about him. But I'm just curious because I haven't spoken to you yet. <clears throat> when he got named head coach... You know, we all saw the video. You were one of the guys that jumped up super quick, super loud, super hyped. Like, you've known him for six years. He's been here the whole time you've been here. What has he meant for you, Alex, the person and the player? Um, So a lot of what I try to emulate as a leader comes from what I've observed from him, right? So I get here, and he's just a linebacker's coach. Um, Coach Avalos comes in and gets promoted to defensive coordinator, and that even that role expanded while Avalos was head coach, and then – um, at the end of last season, getting promoted rightfully so. It's just, and through that whole process, he was always so authentic to who he was. He never changed at all. Like, his values were his values, high energy every single day, and he, he treated people fairly. So, like, you just talk about someone being themselves and being a good leader and being someone that wants, you know, that people want to follow. Like, that that was him. And you, you don't see a whole lot of people like that in your life in general and you know that's why people like that get those special opportunities that actually work out for them mm-hmm. yeah so it was it was super awesome when you know shout out jeremiah dickey like be the able man. to vibe with the team and how much he's done for boise state football and athletics as a whole and then um you know having our back and supporting him into that role that was awesome yeah and you guys went i mean i've been here my whole life here in boise yeah. and I've watched Boise State football. Last year was probably one of the craziest years yeah. I've ever seen. I mean, it was just, you know, up and down, up and down. And so Spencer becomes the head coach, coming off a win, too. So you guys are like, okay. But after that, you guys just, there was a night and day difference from you guys, just like body language and the way you guys played on the field. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah. Yeah, it just felt like the energy was just jolted. Yeah. I mean, am I wrong? No, you're right. Yeah. And I got the opportunity to uh, talk to the team um, before um, we played Oregon. And, you know, I kind of reflected on last year and, you know, more or less the same roster from week one to when Coach D got named as the interim, minus a few injuries, right? But Mm -hmm. the only thing that changed was this team now had a purpose that was greater than any individual on the team, right? So when you see someone playing for something bigger than themselves, like that's when you see teams take that next step and be, you know, special. Mm-hmm. So just contagious too. Yeah. Just kind of you feed off one another. That's cool stuff. Yeah. Sweet. That was a special time. That was a special time in football. I was gonna say because I mean just the lows, the highs. Yeah. I mean I don't have to name them, but I mean you know yeah. I'm sure you went through all of it. And so now it's a brand new year, Alex. So. You get named captain. We're going to the season. You got Georgia Southern. Very high-scoring game. Yeah. Very high-scoring game. And I'm sure, I mean, you guys did all your preparing. That humidity, what's it, what's it like playing in, in that Georgia Southern weather? Is yeah. Savannah, it, Georgia? Is that the city? Was it Statesboro? Statesboro. I think, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern. <laughs> yeah. Don't you pull it up? 
Yeah, hey, um, go ahead and pull that up for me. Where is the campus uh, Georgia Southern located? I mean, uh, I probably should know Sean. the answer to this. No, dude, you're good. You are all good. This is why we're here. Statesboro, I stand corrected. Wow. Okay, Alex. Memory. You know so your geography. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, wait. Oh, it is. Okay. Right outside of Savannah, I guess. Ah, it's not good enough for me. I think we stayed. I think we flew to Savannah or stayed over there and then made the drive for a game. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah, that is... Yeah, it was like over an hour drive. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, so you go into Georgia Southern. Um, heck of a game. A lot of back and forth. You know, yeah. what was that? What was that, that, that kind of like? I know Georgia Southern, there was a bit of a momentum shift. So like you as like the captain, was there any like talks going on the sideline? Like, hey, like, you know. Yeah. What was that? I mean, who are you talking to? What's that? What's like the in-game chatting like on the sideline? Yeah, I mean... First of all, yes, it is hard conditions. And credit to Georgia Southern, those fans and that environment, they do a good job supporting their team and staying in the game. They're really good at home. Yeah. They didn't lose last year, I think. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, I think they went undefeated at home. They might have I think they might have lost one game at home. Or lost one game. But it was correctly. probably to like some anyways, I'll let yeah. you finish. I'm not exactly. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh but yeah, so there it is a tough place to play. That being said, like we train hard for a reason to be able to perform at a high level in those adverse situations. But offense played incredibly well as playing together. Defensively, you know, we showed parts of the game we're playing really well, and then, you know, big emphasis for us is getting off the field on third downs, mm -hmm. right? Which I think, you know, even the Twitter finger um, fans or scouts could, could see that one, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, huge emphasis for us. We did a lot of stuff to beat ourselves, quite frankly. I mean, you know, credit 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 where credit is due. That offense did a good job. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, it's good to learn from a, a week one win, which is a lot of things that a lot of other good college football teams can't say. Yeah. But there was definitely a lot to clean up after the game. Gotcha. Yeah. And so that was the big emphasis. Um, yeah, just getting off third down because I'm sure that's tiring being out there for like yeah. a third down conversion third down conversion you're like my goodness come yeah. on and so do you would you wear the headset um on defense yeah what is uh so is that eric in your ear telling you what the the formation and package is going to look like coach chins yeah chins okay yeah. gotcha and so is that hard to hear in that thing sometimes uh, i mean are you, are you like kind of blocking stuff out yeah, so I guess we'll be able to see because it's usually quieter on the road on defense, right? Okay, so we, that's true. Yeah, this is our home opener, so I'll be able to tell you tell you more after this one. But um, we did have a little bit of trouble week one with the headset communications working out the kinks. It wasn't as loud as um, we would have liked it. Mm -hmm. um, but week two at Oregon is working pretty well. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So you guys huddle up on defense, and you're the one telling the plays? Uh, or I guess the formation? Yeah. Depending on what the you know the offense wants to get up and go, you don't get to huddle up. True. Right? So so it's like depending hey, depending on. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of sweet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, and so the big game. Fast forward to Oregon, yeah. which by the way, heartbreaking loss. Yeah. Yes. So we got to talk about. Um, unfortunately, you know, you got the ejection called on you, and so yeah. it was. Not an ejection at first, but then it got overturned. I mean, in your opinion, do you think you should have been on the field still? Is that targeting? Like, how? What was your emotions like during that? Well, I, I got a. Well, we went through the appeal process, so I got an email from the NCAA saying I should have not been ejected, should not have been called targeting. So, I should have been on the field. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, you know what my opinion's worth, it was an incredibly frustrating situation. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to go of going about it other than just ejecting guy on a bang bang play. Yeah. And, you know, it's a lot easier to say one way or another when you can slow that, that video down into, you know, one one thousandth of a second. Right? Frames. But, yeah. You know, it's happening pretty fast on the field and you gotta make these decisions, split second decisions. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it was frustrating. Um, after that happened, I tried to do what I can to, well, whatever my role was at that point, to help support and lead from where I could. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was frustrating. So did you go? Did you have to? Do you have to go straight to the locker room, or are you just sitting on the sidelines? Yeah. So different than like if you're gonna get ejected from like a personal foul. 
Okay. You can stay on the sidelines, just take your helmet away. But if you get it like ejected from personal foul, you got to go to the locker room. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if oh they have to say personal foul, then you're done. Um. Or I'm not exactly sure the exact verbiage of it. Okay. Um. But yeah. How and I'm sure. Tr- oh, go ahead, Sean. Question. How does the defensive play calling work then, if you don't have the headset anymore? So they have. There's always a, a backup helmet and backup. Like they'll just give it to another player. So they had. They already had. Um, like an emergency situation, I guess you could say. And I think was it Zion? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. And that's super unfortunate too, because I'm sure. I mean, it's your home state. Um, yeah. Did you have a lot of fr- friends and family in attendance too? That. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, but I mean. My head was in the game. Like, that was my, that's what I'm most frustrated about. Like, obviously, super cool to play in front of all those people and wish I would have finished the game. Mm-hmm. But I was more so, you know, focused on, like, I just wish I could have stayed in for the game's sake. And what was the environment like playing in a stadium like Autzen Stadium in Oregon? It's a pretty incredible environment. Really? I mean, that crowd's loud. They're into it. And, uh, yeah, they're very proud of their, um, their Oregon Ducks. Their Ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah, again, that is yeah super unfortunate situation. But, I mean, what's it like watching, like, just Ashton Genty in, like, live action from the sideline against a defense like Oregon and him still doing that? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I <laughs> I see it. First of all, I see it every day. In so practice. It's like, so you're like. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know getting sunny weather every day here in Boise for the most part you take it for granted it's like watching Ash and Genty you start to take it for granted even though you probably shouldn't but oh uh, that's a good way to put it okay but uh yeah no he's he's a extra the ultra competitor and you will always be able to count on him so not surprising by any means but it's fun he's a fun player to watch absolutely yeah Ashton's he's one-on-one man so I, I'm kind of curious on the upcoming game yeah I'm sure you heard about the the whooping cough that yeah. that <laughs> that Portland State has, and I guess you guys are, I think, all good to go. I mean, were you kind of like, whoa, are you sure we want to do this, or how do you, how'd you feel about that? Well, my first reaction is, what is whooping cough? <laughs> Never heard of that before. Um, <laughs> I thought it was like a 1800s plague disease when they first when I first heard about it. I still don't know if it is or isn't. It sounds like the Black Plague. It's like another <laughs> way, yeah. Apparently, it's like pretty dangerous, but... Um, yeah, what it, no. What I mean the game's gonna happen is on I never once um looked enough into it where I thought the game wasn't gonna be on, so it's kinda just, you know, something maybe we joke about or Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't put too much thought into the whooping cough. I hear more about it from like people coming up for the game from back home, like, is mm-hmm. this game being canceled? I'll just tell them no. I was just like, nah, no way. Yeah. Alex with you know, your final home opener and with where you're at, what's like one thing in your game that you've seen the most improved and like the most proud of uh, you are of yourself? Um, from since I've been here until now, um, two things, my football intelligence, just learning and understanding the game, right? So you come, fr- I come from, you know, high school football where I've, we ran three calls, cover one, cover three, cover two, right? And it's just like the most, Black, we say blackboard because right on the blackboard doesn't change based on the formation. It's like the most blackboard calls you can think of. And then now being able to run a defense, which I didn't know how much entailed at the time, um, is something I'm proud of. And some took a lot of growth and a lot of practice. And then two is just my confidence level. Like, And then once I started playing, even learning, you know, you see guys and you start to wonder, like, become hesitant because you're afraid to make a mistake once i overcame Mm -hmm. that i was a a completely different player and i was able to play fast and free and when did that switch flip the yeah not being so hesitant um do you remember over the course of this last season so and even then like there's like multiple like jumps i made um i was much more confident week one last season i had ever been before but you know you just get more and more confident and then you just really you just you know cut the leash you're able to play free okay by the end of the season that's right yeah, yeah. kind of referenced that earlier now everyone can kind of just play free you know you yeah. kind of get in your own flow um alex the person what do you like to do in your free time uh i'm a big like 
sounds corny, big relationships guy. So like I like being around like the tight group of friends I have. Okay. Whether that be like, you know, in the off season we did a lot of golf, pickleball, get out in the river when we can. I like being outside, um, fishing, whatever it may be. Okay. Yeah. It's not corny. You just like being around people. Yeah, like be around the boys. The boys. And and the girl, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Got a girlfriend? I do. There you go. Annie. Nice, good Name save. Name drop, Annie. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so other than football, favorite sport you like to play? Um, like, over the course of my life, baseball. I love baseball. Mm. Now, like, you're not going to just go find nine people and be like, let's yeah. go play baseball. That's, it's hard, dude. Yeah. I've thought about that. You got to get a whole bunch of people and yeah. can't throw as hard anymore. Got to, like, warm up. Yeah, it's just a lot. Yeah. But sports I can play now, probably golf, like the front nine, because after that, I'm pretty, you know. Really? Yeah, I'm over it. You then. fall off after the front nine? Well, it, you know what? I, I have not learned how to um, manage my emotions on the golf course. And, <laughs> and I have really high expectations for myself, which I have no reason to have these high expectations. So, yeah. That's kind of, I mean, it. yeah, golf is hard, man. You just... <laughs> What do you shoot? Can I ask? Uh, I've never broken 90 before. Came close. Okay, so you're like, what, mid-90s, somewhere in yeah. there? That's, I mean, solid. But, I mean, if you're, like, super competitive. No, there's bad days, too, now. Yeah, there's... <laughs> What's the worst score you've had the last two years? I don't know. Like... 108? Um, I came home and played my coach after um season i had to pick up a club and since the summer before that i probably shot over 120 oh my god yeah yeah when did you start golfing uh, a couple years ago oh so yeah you were just a brand new golfer yeah sure let's go with that yeah yeah okay <laughs> ever hit a hole in one i have really like a legit hole in one yeah one <laughs> so one of my one of my friends from back home is the most uncoordinated kid i know love him to death his name's john play sports with him and then all of a sudden he shot a hole in one i'm like dude how the okay john i don't know what it looked like but i i know what happened so yeah i was like i guess it can be done and then so you 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 hit a hole in one oh me yeah oh no i haven't i, I thought you said have you ever heard of... no I... no oh sorry have you ever hit a hole in one that's no. what i meant okay i was no. about to be like okay tubes two years in you're just like yeah dunk uh, if I if I had done that, you would have heard about it by now. You wouldn't have to ask. Yeah. Be like, hey, Alex Tubner, you know, yeah. safety also hit a hole in one at, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, do you like to watch football? Do you have a favorite team, NFL? Yeah. Um, I'm, so, I lived in Houston before I moved to Oregon. So, I got all Houston teams. So H Town. Yeah. Texans, Astros, Rockets. Okay. We can get along with the Texans. Um, I'm a Dodgers fan. Go Astros. Okay, that's episode 148. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just wrap it up. Um, dude, CJ Stroud, he's him. Yeah, he's legit. No, you guys got a cornerstone quarterback. Yeah. I love Houston, dude. You guys, Diggs. Yeah. Tank Dell. Yeah. You guys got a squad, man. I feel like you guys could run the AFC this year yeah. if Mahomes wasn't alive. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows? We got a good defense, too, now. They yeah, a good team. We'll see. Stingley's nice. Yeah. You guys just got a who's that edge rusher you have? Daniel Hunter. Yeah, Daniel Hunter and um, uh, Will Anderson. Will Anderson. Dude, yeah, right. you guys are young. You guys are young. Yeah, I'm a Saints fan. So Huge. is my brother. Really? Yeah. Has he like just been on cloud nine the last two weeks? Uh, I I don't know. I haven't talked to him about it, but I'm sure he's pretty happy. The most surprising thing. Yeah. I can't believe what I'm yeah. seeing. It's insane. Against Carolina week one, I was like, all right, give me, I need another week. After what they just did to Dallas, dude, I think we're back. Yeah, I'll root again. I'll root for anybody against Dallas. No, I just can't, can't say that. They can. Well, what if they want to give me a call next year? I said that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Dallas Stars. We're cutting. The soccer team. Soccer team. Yeah, yeah we're, that's we're what cutting, you meant. We're cutting yeah. that part out. Okay, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, Sean, any other questions you want to know about uh, – Alex, or anything about football, man? Uh, probably everyone I'm going to ask this question is college football 25. How often do you play it, if you played it at all? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I played it a lot when it first came out, and during the summer and fall camp, um, don't really have a whole lot of time yeah. to play the game now. But 
it is pretty awesome playing as yourself in a video game. You play with yourself? <laughs> How often do you play with yourself? <laughs> in college <laughs> football. <laughs> in the video game? Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, when I play, I'm, you know, I want to play with the best. I'm playing myself in the video game. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I meant this whole time, cool. dude. God, Just being weird sure. about it. Got me on camera. You yeah. set me up like that. <laughs> Took a long time to answer. I was concerned. I was like, oh, man. All right. <laughs> um, was it kind of crazy to see, like, I mean, actually, well, you were a 79 on the launch. Yeah. You agree with that? How'd I mean, you feel about it? Uh, I don't really care. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Not that much. I make plays, though. I'll tell you what. That is true. Yeah. Dude, in our dynasty, you're involved, too, right? Our dynasty. Dude, you had the game-winning interception yeah. on Dylan Gabriel in week two. So when you unfortunately got ejected, I was like, dude, dreams are, <sighs> dreams are crushed. Yeah. What happened, man? <laughs> How did the NCAA... Game writers not see that one coming. I know, like, come on, script writers, stick to the script. The refs had to get involved. They just had to, bro. Oh yeah, let's look at that one more time. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tube, um, best of luck against Portland State. Yeah. This upcoming um, Saturday night. Late game. Late game. Final home opener. You kind of sad? Does that make you a little teary-eyed? No, I don't think it's hit me yet. Kind of done, I think, a good job of living in the moments, but I'm sure good. it will. I'm sure it will hit me. Gotcha. Point. I'm sure, yeah, the last game, Oregon State's going to be crazy. Yeah. Well, and that's so, question now. That game, Oregon State, is the day after Thanksgiving at 10 a.m. Are you going to have Thanksgiving here in Boise, probably? Is the, is the family going to come out? Yeah, so we usually do, um, for those Thanksgiving games, we do some as a team, like they'll feed us our Thanksgiving dinner. But yeah, I'll have family out here. Annie will have family out here, so we'll be uh you know, there'll be a Thanksgiving feast somewhere. Okay. So, yeah. I'll cool. Get, I'll get fed. Somehow. Yes, sir. Yeah. All righty. Alexander Tubner, everyone, and before we wrap up, um go ahead and just say into this camera, you know, what the fans are gonna look forward to this season. Uh, I know so far it's been great. Yeah. Job's not finished. Um but, yeah, what are we going to look forward to for this next upcoming game for yeah. Portland State? Uh, first home opener, baby. First home opener. Um, job's not finished. You're, we're going to get better every week, and you have not seen our best football yet. Um, sit on the edge of your seats because it's about to be electric. There you have it. Alex, thanks for joining, man. Appreciate having you on. Thank you again for doing this. Yeah. Um, you're awesome. The Big Tube, actually, before we sign off, what inspired the mustache? That's a – dude, that is thick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you want the whole story? Um, yes, actually. Against uh, who was this? It was against UTEP, University of Texas El Paso. Mm. Go down, make a tackle, just bust my lip open. Had to get stitches after the game. Um, so I wasn't allowed to shave right with the stitches, and then like two weeks go by or whatever the deadline was, and before they pulled the stitches, and I was like. I might be able to grow a mustache. So I just kind of let it ride since. So it's been like two and a half years. I haven't, I haven't even seen the scar yet. Oh, it's just been going. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is that is thick, brother. Because yeah. I know you, I saw it a picture. You had a beard at one point. Yeah. Thank God you shaved that. Mustache yeah. is the move. <laughs> I had to see if I could do it. <laughs> I mean, you have to. Yeah. See it out. And then where you're like, no, nah, we're just going to do the stash. Well, this, the beard was red. I don't yeah, know that. I don't but have mine. Red hair in my see, family. I don't either, dude. I kind of have like a little red here, and I'm like, that's so weird. Yeah, mine was more red than that though, so you don't got it bad. Yeah. Also, I didn't even have a thick as beard as you did, dude. You were like yeah. Viking status. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna wrap up. Let's right, get cool. out of here. I'm hungry. All right, guys, that's episode 148. Um, Alex Tubner, thanks for joining my man. Uh, you were awesome. Best of luck this season, and um, go get him. Yes, yeah, sir. Thanks for having me. Of course. Peace and love. Spread it. Go Broncos. And uh, we'll see you next week. Not a game. Not a game. Not a game. We talking about practice. Now it's time for the takeover. Buckle up for Kobe. Time for the takeover. Well, Dak, here's the deal. I'm the best.
best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. If you ain't first, you're last.